Hmm, today Tragic here and welcome back to Legends of Andor. We are doing Legend 3 and we're kind of getting towards the end of the game now. We probably will finish it either this turn or next turn. There is one little correction. I forgot to move the pawn for the legend marker at the end of the sunrise phase. So we're actually on H. Now there's nothing surprising us. Nothing's coming out. The board state is the way it is. We, unfortunately, we don't have the prince, but we do have one, two, three, four, five things we can do. We can kill five monsters this turn if we need to. Now we know that we're probably gonna finish the game this turn or next turn which means we basically, this is the only guy we have to kill. And we even have a spare slot, which we haven't used yet, which is unbelievable. We also have to kill this guy. So we've got at least one kill we have to do, which is this one here, because she has to kill that scroll by herself. Now we've set her up for it. We've, she's got tons of strength. We've given her the six strength and we've given her the rune stones. So she's ready to do her fate card. This is flipped over, by the way. This guy, on the other hand, is another story. He has to get a witch's brew and a medical herb. Now, we've got he's got a medical herb, but it's the four-pointer. I'd like him to discard the three-pointer. So this turn is really all about swapping around our items. Now, swapping items is a free action, which means you can do it as many times as you want which basically means we're going to do a lot of swapping around because we're going to, like we have this guy, she's got the dark runes now to do the black die, but then we want to get those runes over to this girl, but then she needs to buy the potions, so we need to probably send it back to this guy, and this bloke here, Somehow he's got a. We'll, somehow we've also got it. So at the end of this turn, we want all the. We want a witch's brew, and we want a herb up here. The three herb, who is currently held by this bloke. So there's a lot of weird flipping around of stuff you've got to do, which is going to be a real pain. But once we kill this guy, and we do the witch's brew, we will enable legend three to be revealed and we'll know what's up so normally i like to have that revealed way earlier so we're in a bit of a pickle basically depending on what this is we will win or lose this game let's get straight into it i think i'm going to start off by this guy going one two three flipping over this one two three and gaining an extra die. One, two, three, four, five. Where was he? He was here, right? One, two, three, four, five. There we are. And Brown is just going to attack here straight away. Right, so he's rolling the black die. High numbers, please. You blammo. Oh, almost got a 12. So, basically, he is 10 plus 6, which equals 16, which is a pretty decent roll. We're fighting a scroll, so that's 6 strength and 6 health. No doubles. Boom. So, boom. He's rolled a... Uh, Six, which means he's rolled a 12, which means we've done four damage. One, two, three, four. So you just put one extra round of combat. And we go again. Bammo. An eight. So that's eight plus six. It's equals 14. And low numbers, please. Bam. So that's a 5 and a 6 is an 11. That means we do 3 damage. We only need 2. 1, 2. So the scroll is killed. So that is very well and good. Bam. Now, remember, we're trying to get gold here because, see, the thing is, right, we have the rune stones. 
So what that means is we only need three witches brews to cover everyone because the witches brew takes up an inventory slot, which means you can't have the rune stones and a witches brew. So we need three witches brews. But unfortunately, because of this stupid fate card, we have to have to discard a witches brew, which means we need to buy at least three, preferably four. I don't think we're going to have enough money to buy four, but we may have enough money to buy three. So what we're going to do is just stock up on cash. So we killed this scroll. That's four gold. One, two, like so. And that's the end of that. It's now Green's turn. So Green is going to flip the bird. And take that four gold we just got. And also take the rune stones. And then, because he's actually on the same location as this bloke, we're going to trade. Bam, 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 bam. And bam. So there's six gold here now. Two, four, six. So we're just going to swap that for two ones. We now have five gold. And bam, we've got our first potion already. Beautiful. Plus we have the rune stones where we want them. This person is the best person, I think, to have the rune stones. Or if we can just get this person to here... Basically, these two, these two are the best to have the rune stones, but whatever. We'll just keep going. So now that we've done all that trading, we're going to attack this scroll. So both of these guys spend one hour because we want more gold. So we are rolling with four green dice. So blamo, high numbers. Blamo, high numbers. Oh, Blamo, come on, high numbers. Wow, come on. Come on, this is the last roll. We're stuck with whatever it is. Wow, we just rolled three twos. I can't remember what the fourth one was, but it was also low. And we rolled one black. Wow, that is absolutely horrific rolling. We're going to take damage this turn. So that's six plus two plus two plus three for their strength, which equals a total of 13, which is shockingly low. Now watch, we'll roll a double six. Okay. So we actually get 11 which means we do two points of damage. No one takes damage at least. So unfortunately, that means we have to fight another hour, which is very bad for us because we're very stra strapped for time. Come on, hi oh, come on. A last roll, come on, wow. We Unbelievably bad rolling again. Oh, look at that. Same roll, 13. This is crazy bad. Okay, at least we get a pretty bad roll for him as well now. So that's 6, 7, 8, 9, which is 4 more damage. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we do kill him. Wow, that was shocking. And we're going to take another four gold reward, which means, boom, we have another potion. So this actually means we have one potion, not that we have two. Because remember, we've got to discard one potion for this stupid fake card. Oh, yeah, and this fake card just got fulfilled, by the way. So, bam, we only have one fake card to fulfill. Oh, that was terrible. Bam, it's White's turn now. White is going to move one down to here. Oh, 
like so. And blue is going to go one, two, three. Maybe white's not going to do that. So I'm thinking I'll kill this troll to get more. I want to kill this troll to get more gold. But we do have the option of white just going straight here and spending that 10 gold. Then coming here. So that's going to be one, two, three. That's four movement. That basically uses the rest of the day. I think this is a better choice. It sort of makes the moving to the witch more efficient. It's just, I'm just wondering whether if, if we don't kill this troll, we can reveal this a tiny bit earlier, which might help us. But I think even if we do that, it's going to be revealed too late to really make a difference. So we're going to do this. So he is going to attack the troll. Takes him to six. Brown moves one step closer. Green is going to drop this in the castle and then move one step down as well. So everybody is in range of the troll. So let's see if we can roll better this time. So start with, he's rolling four dice and he does have the the helmet come on doubles okay so we do get a double but it's only worth four so we're going to choose to use the five okay this guy gets to roll two die oh come on what is going on with these rolls yes that's better you get to roll four dice come on you shockingly shocking rolls last. Oh, more shocking rolls. I'm going to stop at four. Normally I'd re-roll that, but I just can't risk it. And come on, a high number with the rune stone. Oh, almost got 12. Still, this is what you get. The, not playing with the wizard is just... The wizard is the coolest character. Being able to flip around the dice is really big. So that's 5 plus 6 plus 4 plus 6, which equals a total of 21. And then we plus onto that 1 strength plus 6 strength plus 2 strength plus 3 strength, which equals another total of 33. Now coming over here, we are fighting a troll. Hopefully we can kill this guy in one turn. We didn't have... I like to get to sort of like 37 for fighting trolls. So as long as we don't roll a double, we will be all right. Okay, so we get a 5. So 5 and 14 is a total of 19 points, which means we do, what, for 14 damage. We only need 12 damage. So that's the end of that. Troll is also killed. Yoink. Blammo, and that gives us, what, uh, a six reward, isn't it? So that's six reward. So we're going to take five gold, and that gives us three potions, which means we get to keep two, because one of them's discarded. And we have one more point, which we, we don't really need any more gold. We're not going to go for any more gold. So we need to decide where we're going to put the point. This guy can get Will so easily, so he's out. This guy's going to be using the rune stone, so we don't care what his values are, so he's out. So it's between these two. And basically, if I give him one, one point of damage, if I give him one point, he has three left for a well, and he's st still got two dice. But if I give this guy a point, and then he gets a well, there's only two left, so he'll actually gain an extra dice. So we're going to give the one point like that. Nice. Now, this guy is going to go one up into here, which is going to make him go backwards twice. One, two. And he's going to trade this to you. Uh, yeah. 
So hang on, he's going to buy three tokens, so we need to get rid of all that. So... I don't think he's actually going to do that trade at all. He's just going to hold on to it. Okay, Brown. What are we going to do with Brown? He's got one, two, three movement left. So I think he's going to go... Uh, I want this well to go to the archer because he's going to get the extra die. So he's got three movement and nowhere to go at all. So one, two, three... Three. I guess I could. I guess I could open up more fog tokens, but you know what? There might be horrible monsters in there, so that's a per terrible idea. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So he's going to go one, two, three. And just be in a position where he can kind of... I, I'm going to leave him here, actually. So he's going to be in a position where he can run up there if needed or come down here. Okay, green. Green is going to swap these tokens with black and then move one point and then move one, two, three, and flip over this. Okay, there's actually a little bit of an error here. Well, it's not so much an error, just a mistake, I should say. I should have gone through the castle, and that would have been only two points of movement instead of three. The power of editing hindsight. One, two, three. And he gets three more. One, two, three, it gets him an extra die. Beautiful. And finally, we have white. He's going to go one, two, three to the witch. One, two, three. And spend all 10, all 15, big pardon, and take one, two, three tokens. Blue is going to spend another two and get into the castle. That's one, two. And then he's going to drop this thing as well. And I think I'm just going to pass on this guy. Green is going to go one into the castle because I want uh, I want this to flip back over one two that basically loses him that dice because this guy needs the die yeah so I'm definitely going to do that even though that's really sucky man that one extra round of combat just cost us a die that's terrible and now white is going to go one, two. So that's one, two. It's going to cost him four will. One, two, three, four. Remember, his will doesn't really matter. And now we're going to do a whole bunch of trading. So these guys are all together in the castle. So he's going to trade one to here. He's going to pick up the three. Because remember, trading is all free actions. He's then going to do the fate card, which is you must drop one witch's brew and one medical herb of any value at the castle. And they're discarded from the game. You blammo. And he has completed his fate card. You boing. Now, before I reveal the other card, I'm just going to finish this while I remember what I'm doing. And then for his final trade, he's going to trade these three items like so. Okay, we have completed all the fake cards. It's time to reveal Legends of Andor, the Dark Magic. Blam! 
the empowered gore. The dark mage Volker has empowered a gore who is wreaking havoc across the countryside. Now, obviously, I've played this game a few times, so I knew that the empowered gore was an option, so I've kind of played in a way that could encompass the way I've done my... I'll show you in a sec. Basically, the legends must defeat the empowered gore before it reaches the zero space or the legend marker reaches N. If the empowered gore is defeated, immediately place the legend marker on the end tile of the legend track. So normally you want like a lot more time to kill the gore because he has seven willpower points and he has twice the entire party's team strength. So if he has 17 strength points in the party, you have 34 strength points total for the gore. During the battle, the empowered gore rolls three red dice and adds identical die rolls. The gore must be defeated in the first round of battle, otherwise it is immediately moved to space seven less than its current space. So what this basically says is that it moves super fast and you've got to complete it in one round of combat. Now, as I said, because I've... Uh, because I've played this quest before, I've done the due diligence in case this came out by stacking, except for this guy, I've got one point of strength on him for some reason, but I've been stacking strength on the centaur. So what this means is I can attack without the centaur and I won't get that double. Because basically if I attack without the centaur, I've got one strength, I've got one strength here. So that's one I've got two strength here and I've got three strength here, which means that we have six strength and the gore has 12 strength. But if I have the centaur in, we'll have 12 strength and the gore will have 24 strength. So I think it's... So what I like to do in this quest is always stack strength on one character just in case the empowered gore comes out. Now he appears at space... Uh, 35. I'm just going to make him huge so we know he's the bad guy. Okay, so that's the empowered gore. And everyone is going to pass now. So we have one more thing. Okay, draw event. Blamo. Hero with the highest rank may look at the top event card of the deck. He then, okay, so we'll just look at the next event. It's a bad event. We're just going to, is it discard it? Return to the top of the event deck or return to the game box. So that's that. Gores now move. So this guy moves one. This guy moves one. This guy moves one. Then scrolls move, so bam, we killed the other two scrolls, and then trolls move, bam, and then these all on tap, and we move one point up. Okay, so basically, the next turn is just a single round of combat. We have to... I've got to do some calculations in my brain, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to leave the centaur out of this combat. So it is... We're going to put it all on the line. So if we go one, two, three, four. So that's four com... I'm just going to do it. Let's just do it right now. We're going to do the next turn straight away because it's only pretty much one thing we're doing. So it, we're actually starting, I could make this into a separate video, but I just want to keep going. So I'm going to keep going, man. So it is brown first and green, then white. Okay. Again, I... Uh, I don't think, I don't think we want the plus extra six, uh, the extra 12 strength that he's going to bring. So he brings six strength, right? But it's 12 strength to the gore. So I'm just going to not put her into the fight. So I've got nothing to do with her. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, flip over this. Okay. Green is going to pick up this thing. 
and then go okay so we lost that die unfortunately so let me just think he's going to go one two three four five and flip over that bam and that is one two three we get that die back and he's in range because he can fight backwards white is going to go one two three and blue is going to go one and get one two three four five this guy here is then going to go one two three four no real reason just for the hell of it One, two, three. Oh, did I forget? One, two. I forgot to actually give him the three when we flipped it. I'm so excited to do the gore fight that I kind of forgotten about him. Green is going to have to wait around now. So this is a good example of uh, why it shouldn't move too quickly. He's also going to have to wait around. And then this guy's going to go one two three one two three okay this guy is going to pass and now everyone is attacking the empowered gore and it's time to get it on it is time right so we roll four blues. Come on, we've got one chance at this. One, two, three, four. High numbers and doubles is what we're looking for. Okay, so we get a double three, which is a six, which is higher than a five. So, and the reason we can use doubles is because he has this thing. Except, of course, we have the witch's brew, which works on single die. So we're gonna flip the single die and we're going to make the 5 into 10. This guy's not involved. This person has 5 dice. Come on, a 6. We really want a 6 here. Come on, we've been rolling so bad. Okay, 5. I'm going to keep that. And we're going to flip the Witch's Brew to turn that into a 10. And he's going to use the herbs to add four extra damage, which is one of the uses of a herb. Gain that number of strength points during a single battle round. So that's another four. Now it's the black die, and he is using, you know, the rune die. So what we want here is a 12 or something, please. Come on, super high. Eight. Not too good, but not terrible. Okay, so let's calculate our battle. That is 10 plus 10 plus 4 plus 8 equals 32. Not too great. Then we add up our strength, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 so that's a total roll. Oh, it seems so low. 38. Oh, this does not look good. That is bad. That is really bad. Meanwhile, we are fighting an empowered gore who actually starts with seven health, which means he has three dice to roll. And his starting strength is, let's uh, just do another one up here for the gore because this is a special fight. So it is 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6 plus uh, times 2 equals 12. So he starts with 12 strength. So basically he's not as powerful as a troll because he starts with 14. So I think we actually, as long as we don't roll doubles or something, we can do this. Come on. One, two, three. 
Low numbers. Low numbers. Six. So that is six plus 12 equals 18. So the final results are, bam, 18, uh, uh, 38 minus 12 equals a total of 26. And that's it. That, my friends, is it. 26 damage. We only need seven to kill. This guy is destroyed. Bam. If the Empower Gore is defeated, immediately place the Legend Marker on the end tile. Bam. The party wins the Legend if the castle is not overrun. It's not overrun. The final adversary revealed on the Dark Magic card is defeated, which it is. Golden rays break through the black clouds. The heroes have fulfilled their fates and defeated the Dark Mage Valkor which we didn't actually get to use his awesome uh, token in this particular quest. The party decides what to do next. A, play this legend again with different fates and different final advances. Or blah, 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 blah. B, you continue the story of Andor by playing Legend 4. That is definitely what we're going to do. And that is it. I can't believe we pulled that out. We had some serious issues with that. I think we lucked out, really, with uh, that that monster. See, if we look at the other cards, we have Stolen Secrets, where we actually fight the Dark Mage himself. And these all have modified strength points based upon our hero strength, like all of these guys. And Volker can roll black dice, like Mighty Troll. But the Empowered Gore can be very, very difficult for people who... Basically, the Empowered Gore is the one that causes a lot of issues for people. I see people asking about it on the forums a lot. But really, the trick is, when you're doing this quest, is to stack strength on a single character, if possible. And then, if you fight the character, just, you know, ignore it. Just run it away. So, bam. I'm really happy i feel great <laughs> okay so i don't know when the next one's coming out uh basically i have started work on the whip for the next story as you can see here once it finishes loading the new board so this is the next legend actually takes place on this new board here but I don't know when I'm actually going to get round to completing this. I've got a lot of uh, personal projects going on at the moment. So I think I'm going to have a break from Legend of Andor for a little bit. Because uh, I want to play another round of Arkham Horror on my physical board game channel next. But uh, this mod should be completed probably by Christmas. But anyway, that is Legend of Andor, and I will see you guys next time.